A great method for verifying the code that you're writing, especially when that code is non-visual in nature, is through the use of a test program. Test-driven development is a good methodology that you can apply in a broader way through the use of a test program. So you can approach testing in a variety of ways. In a very granular way where you're testing a function or you're testing individual statements or in a broader way where you're testing an entire body of code as one cohesive whole to see if the end result is what you expect. In this case, I am doing the former. I am going to test some individual functions. And these individual functions are vital to the operation of the program and then making sure that the core RSS parsing routine works as intended. Because if RSS parsing doesn't work, then there's no point in anything else. And so there are times when you're developing an application, when you're developing software, where there are parts that are so critical to the overall objective that if you test nothing else you must test that and make sure that critical component is rock solid. And so this RSS IO test program will ensure that the data processing process is sound, dependable, and accurate. As was done for the GUI application, in terms of defining a bake file that will produce a make file that will compile the overall program, the overall GUI program, we do the same here with the test program. We use the same scripts for sending code up, getting code down, and running the code so that we have the same levels of productivity when creating the test program as well as using the test program. And this is a good time to look at tools like package config which we're using and as you can see package config has a uh, listing parameter that lists the various modules that are registered with package config so that we can test out different package config parameters for specific modules specific libraries to make sure that they are going to work the way that we expect or work to a level that we can tolerate. Sometimes you don't want to include more in an application than you prefer. And being observant of what package config actually outputs can uh, help you govern how you compile your program. Here we have um, made our made an attempt to um, build the RSS IO test program and one of the modules that it's linked has an error. It's the very module that we want to test in fact. So there's a function for lower casing all the characters in a string and inside this function it uses the actual 
lowercase function from the C++ standard library. And you'll note that many functions in this C++ library, as well as C in general, so in the C and C++ worlds, there is a tendency to use underscores to separate parts of a word. And in this case, uh, the function to lower does not do that. It doesn't follow that convention. So, whereas I would have expected to underscore lower, it's actually one word. Anyway, that has been corrected, as well as other usage uh, errors. And um, we are getting to the point where we're um, ready to test this program. And basically, um, what it does is it's going to look for a file with a .xml extension based on the feed name that we provide um, on line 30. And it will produce a output file. Of course, there's a bug here. It's a logical bug. Compilers can't. Uh, catch those kind of bugs and that error is on line uh, 50 whereas there's a plus sign instead of an equal sign so now that we have that error corrected it's time to expand our use of the parsing routine so this parsing function is a recursive function and I know that in some quarters uh, recursion can be controversial. Generally speaking, when it comes to tree structures, it is one of the most efficient ways to code in a, a programming language like C and C++. So, once we encounter an item, or an item demarcated by an item tag, we're going to use that as a signal that we're in a article context and so when that occurs we're going to set up a entry in the list of articles in this case we're going to take a standard vector and we're going to add a new instance of an RSS article to that vector and that RSS article is going to have empty field members we're going to then declare a pointer where we will grab a reference, a actual pointer reference to the most recent member that we've added to that vector and use that pointer to that member to update that item in place in the vector. Otherwise, we would end up with a copy of the article, of the RSS article, and we would merely update that copy, but not actually affect the um, article that is um, created within the vector. So, anyway, um, now that that general approach is in place, the objective here is to use the data that is returned, loop through it, and output the contents to a string variable that will then be used in um, creating a plain text file that has those contents. And so we're going to take each article and um, article web address we're going to tab we're going to tab it over we're going to indent the file so that it's clear what is a headline and what is a article web address and that's going to be the goal and at the same time um, I'll put the um, name of the feed so that it's clear that the contents match the name of the file so everything should match up So we'll build a uh, updated version of the RSS test. Um, there is a usage error. Let's correct that usage error. 
once that is corrected, then we can build a new version, grab a new version, and then run it. Here we've ran it, and by doing a directory list, we see that there are zero bytes in the file. That saves us several clicks because we can simply look at this output and know that there's nothing there. And we'll continue to run iterations of this after we, as we make code revisions, run new iterations, and that will get us to the point of knowing how far we've come in terms of parsing the data. And just out of curiosity, we opened the text file just to look. And sure enough, there's still an issue. The issue is on line 104. And once we correct that, um, we will be in good shape. And it's understandable that a line of code like that would be written. Who wants to deal with an invalid pointer, right? But in this case, we need to do the antithesis of that and use the pointer's valid validity as a signal as an indication of the context in which we're operating. And so by making that modification, it rectifies the algorithm and we're ready to run it and see what our results are. So we run the code. Let's do a directory listing. And we now have data in the file. Let's see what that looks like. So we're going to go and open the file and there are headlines as expected. Now the for loop that is looping through the RSS article instances it is um, just blatantly outputting data or data fields without respect to um, the availability of contents or the existence of contents. And so, with a few more changes, we now have a full text file that has all the content available. And this is very close to how the final version of the XML parse would appear. And so, let's uh, make note of this in our Git repository. And once again, um, more detailed um, Git commit statements is preferred over those that don't tell you anything when you go back years later or even a week later to find out where things may have gone wrong.